welcome to Take a Wonder with Shebs. Now, today is a very special edition of the show. I'm going to be talking to someone who is the pioneer of Take a Wonder with Shebs and see why he started the show. I'm going to be interviewing none other than myself. How's it going, Shebs? Thanks for having me. Looks like one of us has made an effort. Well, this is how I do all my interviews. So, so since you started the show, did you ever imagine been here a year on? Absolutely not. I did not see this at all. I initially started the show during lockdown and I thought to myself, you know what, let's get through time. I'm sure we'll be coming out of it very soon and I can go back to traveling and living my life again. But where the show is now, I just can't believe it. Now I've spoken to some of the most renowned people around the world you know every every guest is unique but I've had some notable guests and I thank them for coming on uh, and I, you know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my guests and um, collaboration is very very important in the world of travel or anything I've known well any industry really networking and this has been a great way of networking and it's given me the opportunity to do well, open up the doors really to other uh, other avenues. So, which guest did you have on that you felt was your breakout moment for the show? When you look at my interview with Lola Akinedi Akastron, that will probably be the one that really got me into the limelight. You know, when I started approaching other guests, and I've said I've had. Uh, people like her come on my show, automatically I got respect. And I did email her uh, a few months after I'd spoken to her for my show and thanked her because if it wasn't for her, you know, <laughs> I probably wouldn't be sitting here, you know, a year on. So I really do owe her great gratitude. So, so which interview has struck you the most during this year? Well, I try and vary my guests every single week. No one guest I feel as though is the same. So I don't want people to listen or watch the show thinking it's the same. Well, there was a few. I think I brought on you know, Max, who was, who's deaf, and he makes documentaries or shows on his YouTube channel. You know, what an extraordinary guy you know, to do or create content uh with i guess something that i can't imagine you know i'm not deaf myself but you know he's going out there and, and producing which is fantastic there was another one i did with uh jeanette seha and again when i brought her on the first question i asked her was how have you been and she started telling me about being depressed that was another eye opening to the industry as a as a whole. We're always traveling, you know, sometimes when things stop or come to a halt, it can have an effect on your mental life, uh, mental health. So that was another one. And the third one would be my interview with Allah. Now, Allah has not met his newborn child as of yet. He was meant to be in Israel with his wife, but unfortunately, he still hasn't. And, you know, sometimes travel can be seen as a luxury, uh, but if you listen to his story, there's no luxury whatsoever. So those were the three that really stuck uh, in my mind. Do you keep in touch with any of the people that you've spoken to? Yeah, absolutely. I, I keep in touch with most of the people that I've brought on, you know, um, all brilliant people. I love to sort of meet up with them in the near future, and you know, I, I keep in touch with some of them more than others. But uh, no, they're all fantastic individuals. You know, where would you like to see the show go next? Uh, I'll see how long I can do this. You know, hopefully, I carry it on. You know, whether I keep it weekly, I'm not too sure. It's keeping up the content. You know, it's been great. I've been doing it. You know, I've not missed a week which is fantastic, you know, I record ahead, I schedule it, so it gives me a lot of time to work on other things. Uh, people don't see the work that goes behind it, you know, all the editing, 
whatnot. So I like to keep I like to keep it going. You know, I, I hopefully you know there's other opportunities I get from it. You know, I can maybe do other things. You know, actually during the year you also started writing as well. You started writing your blog. You've also written a few articles as well. The one blog that comes into mind that you wrote was the lack of authenticity within the industry. Why did you feel as though you wanted to write a piece like that? It took me a good few months to research into that and write that. Now, the reason why I did it was because, well, I have been in the industry for not too long and I started seeing a few things where I thought, yeah, but that doesn't seem right. And when you've got a gut instinct, I think you're generally right. So I had a guest on actually who told me about when it comes to bloggers, when they write, it's very subjective. With how blogging and, and the influencers world uh, is going with, in terms of business, I just felt as though I that there must be something not right here and I brought a guest on as well another guest on who just outright lied to me when I done my checks and one of the things I think the reason why my show has been quite successful is that I do my checks I do my due diligence on my guests to make sure what they're telling me is right or correct so when I again embarked on the journey of writing this piece some of the things I found out to be honest with you, it doesn't really surprise me because it's a relatively new industry. There's a lot of money involved and people are going to flaunt it. And I did say I don't blame the bloggers or the influencers themselves. I think it's the regulations, you know. It allows people to misbehave. But I feel as though the industry is potentially well the blogging and the influencing world is you know as corrupt as maybe the financial industry i think there might be a bit of a seismic um earthquake to come and there's going to be a lot of people who are in the industry who are not doing it authentically you know their worlds will come crashing down so would you say society is flawed with their morals we all have flawed morals. None of us are perfect. And I think the ones that keep going on about how high their morals are, uh, in particular on social media, in my experience, they tend to be the worst. Where would you like to see yourself? I would love to be potentially making documentaries. Um, I'd love to have my own chat show on, on TV uh, about travels. And yeah, I'm going to be embarking on a new journey in the world of radio. I'll see how that goes. But, you know, hopefully I can do more writing, more publications for other magazines, other you know, newspapers, maybe. And yeah, we'll see. I always ask this away from everything that you do. Have you got any hobbies? I love tennis. Tennis is something I've actually missed actually since we've been in lockdown. Over the last year, I've not played as much as I obviously usually do. Uh, I mean, I've played at a certain standard. Uh, I'd like to think I'm a decent hitter of the ball. I can hit with a few pros, which I have done. In fact, one pro said to me, you, sh you should really play in competitions, but just don't have the time to be quite honest with you. And I've played against some up-and-coming pros and taken a few games off them. And that tells that can tell you how well I can play and in fact I really think they should have annihilated me because I don't really play as much as they do so yeah that should tell you the standard I can play at. Well how often do you play? I try and play two times a week at least in normal times. Uh, during the summer it can be about three or four times but yeah about twice a week is enough. What about politics? Have you got any thoughts on who you might vote in the next general election? My granddad once said to me Whoever you vote for should be between you and the voting booth. What are your thoughts on American politics? It doesn't really make a difference to my life here in the UK. You know, we've got our politicians, they make our policies here. You know, how much tax I pay, 
the Americans don't have any say in it. The American government, I should say, sorry. So, come on. What annoys you the most? There must be something. I think virtue signaling, I mean, we can all get caught up in it. Uh, but most recently, uh, I've noticed there's a lot of people on social media, as I said to you, you know, virtue signaling about how high and almighty they are. And as I just said to you, they tend to be the worst of the lot. I'll have to leave it there. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Congratulations on a year of weekly episodes. Hopefully there's more to come from you. I really appreciate your time. And as I said to you, think about maybe upping your game when it comes to dressing up. Listen mate, I'll have a thing. This is the way I do all my interviews. So as I said, just get used to it. Well, there you go. That was a very special edition of Take a Wonder with Shebs. I hope to see you all very soon. Until next time, bye for now.